welcome to CNBC TV 18. I'm Shireen Bhan. On the show today, we put the focus on the Uday Kota Kled Committee's report on corporate governance. It has recently submitted its report to the market regulator SEBI. In its 170 page report, and a large chunk of that has to deal with the next shares, etc., the 21 member panel has made some important recommendations on the composition and the role of board of directors. These include recommendations on the number of directors, attendance, even skills. The panel has also shared its views on issues like gender diversity as well as the separation of roles of non-executive chairperson and the CEO. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs has expressed its dissent on several of the recommendations that have been made by the committee saying that those changes are not really feasible and many could cause regulatory overlap and may unnecessarily make functioning of company boards tougher. It seems that the market regulators attempt to make company boards more effective will be a tough sell. Joining us to discuss all of that and more are the former SEBI chief M. Damodran and also with me here in the studio Sandeep Khetta, National Leader Financial Accounting Advisory Services at EVI India. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on the show. To start with, let me come to you, Mr. Damodun. The fact of the matter is that there are several loopholes that require plugging. Uh, do you believe that the Kota Committee's recommendations have done that significantly and meaningfully? And do you also believe that in terms of addressing the core issue of board effectiveness, the recommendations will have a far-reaching implication? I think we must address the constraints first, the constraints that the committee faced. Now the entire universe of companies falls within the ambit of the Companies Act, which mm -hmm. the MCA administers. Mm -hmm. SEBI deals only with the listed entities, which are a few thousand. Therefore, the SEBI LODR really relates to a much smaller universe. And the Kota Committee started out with the limitation that it could only look at what SEBI has provided in the LODR regulations. And clearly what was in the Companies Act was outside its domain. Hmm. Nevertheless, I think it has made bold to recommend some things which would need amendments of the Companies Act. I think it's a step in the right direction because if you flag the issues, hmm. even if SEBI can't do it, if it is accepted, clearly the MCA at some point of time might want to look at it. Yeah. Therefore, I don't view this as a regulatory overlap. The mm. way I look at it is the, the basic uh, enacted legislation, of course, is superior to subordinate legislation. Mm -hmm. But nothing prevents a regulator from providing additionalities so long as they are not inconsistent with the provisions with the of the company act. Mm. You are with the law. That said, I want to also flag one other issue. I think they address a large number of uh, uh, relevant issues, but I think, again, the limitation, if you look at how the report uh, has been written, is right. that they took LODR as a given mm. and made improvements on that, mm. chopped and changed, added a little bit, deleted something. I wish they had written on a clean slate. Okay. If they had just thought, okay, we are writing the LODR for the first time, right. how do we write this? It would mm. have made their task much easier mm -hmm. and it would, they would not have been the prisoners of incrementalism. Okay, they would not have been prisoners of incrementalism. Uh, let me uh, put that question to you, Sandeep. Uh, uh, do you believe that, uh, as Mr. Damodran has pointed out, the report uh, finds itself constrained? Uh, or do you believe that it has done what it possibly could, given its mandate? Yeah, so uh, I, would, uh, I would echo Mr. Damodaran's view that the, the, the whole framework of the report is, as what report has also acknowledged in, in a way, is not revolutionary, but evolutionary, mm. you know, in that, in that sense. So, so I think they have made an attempt uh, to do a comprehensive review of all the existing regulations, try to plug the gaps wherever they are, uh, you know, address different aspects of corporate governance. Yeah. So I would say to that extent, it's a, it's a very, very comprehensive review of the existing regulations. Comprehensive review and let's treat it as evolutionary and not necessarily revolutionary. But Mr. Damodran, let's talk about the recommendations made with respect to making a board much more effective. Now, the recommendations include the minimum number of directors to be increased to six from three, disclosure of skills and competencies expected versus the actual, uh, the separation of the role of the chair person, the CEO and the MD, resolution for special businesses to be sent to shareholders, etc. Uh, there's a long list of recommendations that the Kota Committee has made with respect to enhancing board effectiveness. What to your mind is the big highlight there and what do you see as being the practical challenges? Well, I think uh, let's look at the composition first. 
The increase in the minimum number of directors is a welcome step. Uh, if only for one reason, which is that you have four mandatory board committees for listed entities. Mm. And you can't, with three directors on the board, have four committees unless the same people, uh, you know, have separate meetings and give different names to their meetings. You need to have uh, more, and I think in order to populate the committees of the mm. board. And committees are getting increasingly important. It's necessary to recognize that uh, com committees need to be better staffed, better structured, okay. and for that you need a bigger board. Secondly, uh, I'm uncomfortable with the position that the woman director must be independent. Mm -hmm. I've maintained for a long Why time... Why is that, sir? ...that if you... I have maintained for a long time that if you can have someone's son or nephew on the board, mm. I see no problem having the daughter or the niece on the board. Fair I point. don't see because of gender there. But I would say, and I've said this before, you have a minimum of two directors mm. of whom one should be, at least one should be independent. independent. So if you have two women on the board, and I don't buy the argument that you will not get candidates. Mm. We're an overpopulated country. If you look around, you'll find people. Mm. Okay. I think these are two. Uh, the meetings of the board, the number being increased, definitely. But I think moving from four to five, since you're making an increase, you could have moved from four to six. Then saying that the extra meeting will look at risk succession planning. Hmm. Succession planning and risk don't wait for 12 months. <laughs> these things should be discussed during the quarterly meetings, if not in between meetings. And I also think that informing the board, and this is a very critical yes. uh, recommendation, Informing the board once a year of regulatory changes mm. doesn't travel far enough. It, to my mind, it doesn't even get started. Okay. Most well-meaning companies inform directors of regulatory changes between board meetings. Okay. If a change takes place, you get to know it as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. And then you discuss the implications of that in the next board meeting. Okay. Don't wait for one last meeting. Risk cannot wait for one last meeting. So there are a number of issues where they've addressed the issue. But these are clearly baby steps. You needed to make so such bigger steps. The, right? They should have taken bigger steps, perhaps uh, not far-reaching enough in these specific instances. And I, uh, you know, uh, you you provided a different perspective to the issue of uh, having an independent woman director on board. But what is this actually going to mean? And let's just address the issue of composition and what it means now for corporate India, because the Quota Committee's recommendations it's a staggered timetable between 2018 and 2020. But uh, you know, I'm just looking at some data that Prime Database has put together, and if if you look at what it says, out of 1,670 firms listed on the NSC, there are at least 640 firms that will have to segregate chairman and managing director and the CEO roles. Also, at least 256 companies on the NSC will need to increase their board size and 637 companies will have to appoint a woman director. Uh, you know, we're not, 2020 is not very far away. So from a practical point of view, uh, how challenging is, is, is this going to be when we talk about changing the composition? I think to my mind uh, it's going to be a significant challenge uh, because the the issue here is not only of having the right uh, having the directors on the board but also now what the report recommend in terms of the competence of the directors yeah. Yeah. in terms of declaration about you know uh, uh, do we have the right skill sets and, mm. and making those disclosures mm. at the mm. beginning of the meeting etc mm. so i think all of that may potentially is going to put a lot of stress uh, in terms of the ability of the management to attract the right set of directors um, and 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 uh, and ensure the compliance of the suggested recommendations uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, Mr. Uh, Damodaran, I want to pick up on two of those uh, recommendations, sir. And one is actually, uh, uh, you know, evoked quite a strong response from the Minister for Railways uh, and Coal, Piyush Goyal, in a conversation with me. And he said that he believes the quota committee has gone, and I'm using his words, completely off track when it comes to the, the disclosure of skills and competencies uh, uh, with respect to. To board composition, sir. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think his observation was right. The phraseology is interesting coming from a railway minister because uh, I, I, I think clearly he wanted to send a strong signal that the committee needed to remain on course. I think that's what he intended to say. Uh, publishing the qualifications of the directors is neither here nor there. Yeah. You're saying that when directors come in, you make 
a statement to the shareholders that this is the qualification of the director. Mm. Now, what it doesn't make sense every year to have the qualifications restated, which means they have not been working in the boardrooms, they've been attending universities and getting additional qualifications. You, you need to ensure that you get good people on the board, but mm. to you know, have excessive disclosures doesn't make sense. I want to go back to the question that you asked Sandeep a little while ago. Is it going to be difficult to fulfill this? Well, the women directors should have been in position long, long ago. Oh, absolutely, ago. I so agree with you. For 200 companies, yeah. for 200 crowd companies to now say we're getting started, sorry, the, mm. I think the stick ought to have been wielded long yeah. ago. Yeah. Then as far, as far as separating the two positions, chairman, and the managing director concerned, I think it is one of the best recommendations in the report. Mm -hmm. This is something which any well-intentioned student of governance will tell you that if you combine both these roles in the same person, mm. you're negating corporate governance because the chairman is the chairman of the board and has to ensure that the management functions properly and the MD is the head of the management. Mm -hmm. So is it that I just look after uh, whether I'm doing my work and the rest are uh, spectators in the boardroom? It just can't be that. Mm. That's a very, very good move. That's a very good move. And I think there are several others. The appointment of a lead independent director, I think, yeah. is a good thing. Mm. They've, uh, they've fallen Again, short sir, on the you know, and meetings I, of independent directors. Uh, yes. Appointment of a lead independent Sorry. director. Yes. Again, I was having a conversation with yes. several other yes. uh, uh, you know, members of boards, etc. And uh, one view is that, you know, why should somebody be more equal than others? Because if a board is, is meant to enjoy the same status and the same power, or members are supposed to enjoy the same status and same power, then by appointing somebody as a lead independent director, why make somebody more equal than others? I don't think you're making anybody more powerful. You're giving somebody an additional responsibility. If you have a committee, there will be a convener. Does the convener become more responsible? Maybe he or she gets to fix the dates on which the committee meets. If within the committee, everybody is equal. Within the boardroom and in the meeting of the independent directors, everyone states his or her views. But there must be one person who is a channel of communication, mm. who is a coordinator. He is, he is not primus inter pares. He is very much one of the boys or girls, but he has the responsibility to communicate in a representative capacity. Mm. He is not, uh, he's not uh, placed higher than the others, no. Okay. Uh, Sandeep, let me ask you now, in terms of some of the other recommendations that the, uh, the committee makes, and this is with respect to increased transparency and disclosures, uh, corporate governance, jurisdiction, financial reporting, etc., uh, the role and, uh, uh, of the audit committees and so on and so forth. Uh, Mr. Damodaran says that for him, the single biggest highlight is this split between the chairman and the managing director and CEO's position. To you, uh, what would be some of the other key significant highlights? I think if I were to pick up uh, two or three significant changes, uh, one I would say the enhancement in the role of the audit committee mm -hmm. uh, in which they have said that now audit committees are supposed to review uh, all funds transferred to a yes. subsidiary company in excess of the specified threshold mm. and, and also have an oversight on the utilization of those funds. I think that will address a lot of issues in terms of diversion of funds from one company to another company mm -hmm. you know, in, that, in that context. Uh, the other other significant change, uh, which again has been, uh, which was actually pending for a long time, which has again come back here, is to make the the consolidated financial statements right. to be published on a quarterly basis mm. and to be to have a limited review by the auditors, etc. I think that also going to bring out a lot of information out to the investors at mm -hmm. the right point in time before uh, it comes at the end of the year in that in that sense. So I think that also is extremely significant step uh, as and when implemented. Well, on that note, it's time for us to slip into a quick break. But when we return, we'll come back and discuss the recommendations of the Uday Kota Committee on Corporate Governance with the former SEBI chief, M. Namodran. Stay on with us. Welcome back. You're watching Eye on India. We're discussing the implications of the Uday Kota Committee's recommendations for corporate governance. Joining us on the program, former SEBI chief M. Damodran and Evai's Sandeep Khetan. 
Mr. Damodran, the committee was set up in the backdrop of uh, two bitter boardroom battles that we've seen play out in corporate India. Uh, the Tatars and then, of course, Infosys. In light of the recommendations that have been made, do you believe that the kind of liberties that we saw uh, being taken with respect to corporate governance, those will adequately be addressed and we will not perhaps see a repeat? Prime Minister side, there is a solution. And I say Prime Minister side because we have to see how this plays out. There is a solution which is worse than the problem. And that is the sharing of information mm. with the promoters. They are, they are called counterparties. Counterparties will get information which their nominees on the board get. Now, if you have a nominee on the board and the nominee gets information, what is the reason for a counterparty mm. to expect information to be served on a platter separately? You, because you are creating then an unequal position mm. for shareholders. The retail shareholders don't get that information merely because you are a promoter. Right. Merely because you are, uh, you know, coming within the definition of counterparty as in the proposals, you, you tend to get more information. There are only two issues to my mind which are critical in governance. Mm. Conflict of interest mm. and asymmetry of information. Right. You are institutionalizing asymmetry of information mm. and giving it a cloak of legitimacy mm. by putting in place these memoranda. I think that that's a solution that to my mind is worse than the problem mm. and it dilutes the PIT regulations of SEBI. As for the Infosys problem, uh, permit me to state that uh, there were structural issues, issues in Infosys yes, yes. and no, no committee's recommendation can mm. prevent that. You did raise the context of a lead independent director with some directors are more than equal. This, that is a classic case where mm. you had three directors who were overseeing the uh, MD. Mm. You have the other directors keeping quiet. And one other recommendation which to my mind is critical mm. but doesn't do enough is the stakeholder relationship committee has been specifically tasked to do a whole lot of things. Okay. I wish the committee had, and I, I, I've said this before, I wish they had noticed that it's no longer the shareholders committee, it's a stakeholders committee. You should have gone beyond shareholders. And number two, it's a relationship committee mm. proactively reaching out to stakeholders. They've mm. done that for shareholders. And I, th I think that's a very, it, it's a move in the right direction. Okay, it's a move in the right direction. Mr. Tamotun, what next now? We have the recommendations out here being debated in public. But from a regulator's point of view, what would the next steps be? What would you like to see? Uh, also, as far as the possible changes to the law are concerned, because that's what the Ministry of Corporate Affairs is possibly going to look at. What is the next step that you expect there? I think what SEBI should do once the comments come in, if the general acceptance of the recommendations, whatever falls within SEBI's jurisdiction should be quickly implemented. Mm. You have normally, and I'm not saying this about SEBI, SEBI's track record has been better than most others. You normally have reports that come in and then they just lie around. Yeah. The SEBI uh, reports that have come in have been acted on times without number in the past mm. and I would expect Keeping that up, SEBI will implement those recommendations which fall within its province after the comments have come in. Uh, as for the others, I think it's time for a healthy dialogue between mm. SEBI and the Ministry of Corporate mm. Affairs to say, all right, all right, we can't do this for all companies. Why don't you give us a dispensation to do this for listed entities right. by making an enabling amendment in the companies? I do, don't have to come, amend all of that. Mm. You put in a standard proviso which says that provided that for listed entities, mm. SEBI shall be authorized to make additional provisions. Mm. So long as these are additionalities and not inconsistencies, I don't have a problem. But I think they should now step on the throttle a little bit. Step on the throttle a little bit. Uh, uh, Sandeep, so let me then end by asking you in terms of greater alignment between the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, the market regulator and other regulators as well. What kind of harmonization would you like to see as the next step? Yeah, so I think uh, what what we need to possibly see a greater interaction between all the three uh, different stakeholders, whether it is ICAI, whether it is MCA or SEBI, uh, in that in that sense. And also, I, I echo what Mr. Damodaran said that SEBI should be empowered to make regulations for listed companies because that is where that's its uh, job. Their yeah. space is, and they, their job is to look at investor protection and and minority shareholder uh, engagement in mm -hmm. that in that sense. So I think, and I, I I really like that idea of making a small amendment. In the Companies Act, but right. which may have very far-reaching impact in empowering mm. the regulators to implement uh, some of these reforms uh, in a meaningful manner.
Okay, so uh, it's very clear you're saying that uh, this is a car that needs to move in top gear and that the regulator as well as the Ministry of Corporate Affairs need to get together and get moving to take these recommendations forward. But what would you say could be the stumbling blocks as we move this process ahead? I don't see too many stumbling blocks. There is one way the Institute of Chartered Accountants will dig in and say we are the regulatory authority for chartered accountants. Therefore, SEBI should not uh, have any disciplinary authority. But I, I have a contrary view. I agree with what the committee has said. If your opinions are those that the shareholders go by, clearly the market regulator should be in a position to discipline you. Mm. Maybe you have concurrent jurisdiction. I have no issue with that. Uh, I think that we need to now see what are the easy pickings here. Mm. Number of meetings for committees, uh, num the numbers on the board, I think as of yesterday, if not tomorrow, mm. this should have been done. Right. Uh, three directors on the board, uh, you, you know, some of these are uh, uh, simply not enough. Huh. Okay, simply not enough and ought to have yeah. been done yesterday, uh, uh, not wait to tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Damodran, I suspect that we're going to have to continue to have these conversations over the next few months because this is only scratching the surface, so to speak. But we will get back to you, sir, uh, and, and discuss each of these recommendations. Threadbent, thank you very much, Sandeep, for joining us here on the program as well. Uh, for now, from all of us here, just part one of the Kota Committee's recommendations and its implications for corporate India, we will continue to track these stories on CNBC TV 18 on Ion India. From all of us here, goodbye. Thanks for watching. Presented by EY, building a better working world.